What would you say is the question around technology with which CEOs are most intensely grappling right now? A lot of real estate investors are just waiting for things to go back to the way they were. They're never going back there, but they're not gonna use the space in exactly the same way. And then the biggest thing that's changing is generative AI and AI in general. If you take two weeks off of looking into what's going on, you're extremely far behind. And I think companies don't wanna miss it. Companies don't wanna you know, go too far in the wrong direction, but I really think it's AI that is you know, really top of mind for most companies in terms of what does this mean for my business? What does this mean for my people? What does this mean for my tenants? And so what would you say to a real estate owner who has the view of like, I've seen this movie before. We just lived through crypto. I invested all this time in blockchain and whatever, and isn't AI just another you know flavor of the week. Like let's say from a board perspective, if you want to have a cyber expert, you know you want to have financial experts. You trust the company to have the crypto expert. With crypto, I think that you know companies are able to do what they need to do there without the board getting that involved. To me, I think every board member right now really needs to understand AI and what it can do. One uh, director uh, who is a great guy, but he sent it like a really hard physics question and he wasn't 100% happy with the response. And I was like, well, yeah, well, you, you, if you want to be 80% happy with the response and then figure out how it gets to 100%, and that's what this is going to do for industry. How do you think it will impact the real estate industry? There's two ways to look at it. One is companies have to look inward and say, can I be more efficient with my accounting, with my leasing? But I still think you need human eyes and brain to double check it and to audit it. But then the much bigger issue, I think, is for companies to look externally, and this is in all asset classes, and say, who is this gonna affect in such a, again, seismic way that this might go away? There's gonna be real implications in the healthcare sector. Once that becomes phenomenally more efficient, what does that mean for insurance? Insurance companies too. Large tenants they may very well be much smaller than they are in the future because of AI. And I would actually say there's some obvious conclusions like data centers must have massive tailwinds behind them. Is that one way you're thinking about it? Back in the early 2000s, when law firms started to be a little bit more rational about their office space, and they got rid of their law libraries. Like I, I kind of think the Apple store on, on 59th Street, I think that was like somebody's big law library. So you get rid of the law library, so you don't need that space. And then you go to an open floor plan, not really at a law firm, and you don't need that space. This is like, you know, you might just be able to put, you know, some aspect of your business like in a warehouse like you never could before, and your needs for actual people in the office are gonna be much smaller. So that could be like the third whack to the office business that we've seen in the last, you know, five years. A lot of jobs could be eliminated. What's the reassuring silver lining of AI that you think people should focus on? Well, one thing is I will go back to a little bit of a lesson of history, because I remember in the mid 90s when defense spending was being cut dramatically and people felt this way about defense jobs and contractor jobs. And a whole generation of workers got retrained as tech people and engineers and laying the cable that became the internet. Multiple industries, you know, thrived because that went away. And so this is really all, you know, evolution. As much as some of the users we have now are not gonna use space the way they were, you know, different industries are gonna really step up. I mean, as rents become cheaper, innovative companies wanna be in the best cities and they'll, they'll go to those buildings and there will be demand. One of the things we try to do at Fifth Wall is help boards, help executive teams understand these existential, you know, secular shifts that are happening in their industry. How do you do that with AI? I think it's an exciting opportunity for Fifth Wall to really be a leader in helping companies sort of understand and figure out how to invest in and what to look out for in terms of all kinds of AI going forward. There are such fine minds in the real estate industry and they have a lot of great ideas about innovation, but it's no one's job to, to dig into it or execute it. And I just love how Fifth Wall is able to work together with LPs and kind of suss out ideas and it goes both ways. It could be a re another really exciting time for us as we go down this road. Well, Mary, you just have such a depth of experience around the real estate industry, and just thank you so much for being involved. Such a pleasure. I mean, there really is a generational shift in what's going on, and, you know, you guys help me feel young <laughs> about these topics, so thank you so much. Well, thank you.